Church, brothers and sisters. I'm your brother Kasafo. My brother Jacqua. We have a great and exciting lesson for you today. This is the third lesson that we're doing for today, so make sure that you go back and check the other two lessons that we did today so you can have a completion of everything that we and matter, matter of fact, you have to go back onto the lesson that we did the previous week um, to have a full understanding of dietary law. Um, so the lesson we're going into today is food for thought, the spiritual thing of the dietary law. Now, we all know the dietary law has been, you know, of course, many Christians or Jews or anyone that follows the Bible knows about the dietary law, right? But we don't actually understand the spiritual significance of those animals in the dietary law itself. So today we're going to go into that. Uh, Brother Kasafo, let's go into Barnabas chapter 10, verse 1. All right. Barnabas chapter 10, verse 1. For as much as Moses said, Ye shall not eat swine, nor eagle, nor falcon, nor crow, nor any fish which hath no scale upon it, he received in his understanding three ordinances. All right, we continue. We're still in Barnabas chapter 10. Um, Brother Collins was going to read through around verse 6. Uh, I'll probably stop you somewhere in the, in the midst of it, though. Okay. Verse 2. Yea, and further he saith unto them in Deuteronomy, And I will lay as a covenant upon this people mine ordinances. So then, it is not a commandment of Allah that they should not bite with their teeth, but Moses spake it in spirit accordingly. Verse 3. Accordingly, he mentioned the swine with this intent Thou shalt not cleave, saith he, to such men who are like unto swine. That is, when they are in luxury, they forget the Lord. But when they are in want, they recognize the Lord. Just as the swine, when it eateth, knoweth not its master. But when it is hungry, it crieth out. And when it has received food again, it is silent. Now, this is very interesting because we have to understand that who we surround ourselves around, that who we're going to start operating like. Because people, birds and feathers flock together. So if a person is operating like a swine. So whenever he needs something, he's begging, begging, begging. So then as soon as he gets what he needs, he's okay. He, he goes on about his business until he needs something again. And if they operate toward a like that, they're going to operate like that towards everyone. This is why I say you're not supposed to surround yourself around people like this, because this is how they operate, no matter what. So. We have to be very mindful of who we're around and the spirits that we're letting around us at the same time. God is our soul. We, we fall into a snare or a pit. Continue, Brother Zachary. Oh, I apologize, Brother Zachary. Not only making sure we're not that type of person, also, Yache said, don't cast your pearl among swine or unto swine. So people that operate like that those are signs to let us know not to say anything to them about the gospel and things like that. We got that part. Barnabas chapter 10, verse 4. Neither shalt thou eat eagle, nor falcon, nor kite, nor crow. Thou shalt not, saith he, cleave unto, or be likened to, such men who know not how to provide food for themselves by toil and sweat, 
but in their lawlessness seize what belongs to others. And as if they were walking in godlessness, watch and search about for someone to rob in their rapacity. Just as these birds alone do not provide food for themselves, but sit idle and seek how they may eat the meat that belongeth to others, being pestilent in their evil doings. Now this one is very interesting and I want to touch on a couple of things as far as this one. First he said don't cleave unto them, right? So that means to hang around them. And it also says, or be likened to them, right? So you're not supposed to be like them, right? Now the thing about these specific people, the thunderers, the robbers, they're always looking for a come up, right? But there's one specific part that I want everybody to pay attention to. It says, but in their lawlessness, seize what belongs to others as if they were walking in godlessness, watch and search about for someone to rob in their rapacity. So they actually walk around as if they're upright or if they're not up to any wrong. They actually walk around as if they're, they're doing right. But they're actually searching and, and, and looking for when they can actually seize the moment to take what it is that they want. So these people are very, very subtle, and you have to watch out for these people. And you can see why we're not supposed to eat foods that are attributed to such behaviors. The spiritual aspect of it. You the spirit of that creature affects us as well. Just like even the swan, as we're reading on the abominable things, it's a it's irascible. As you see ducks and quack, 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 all that loud noise and the chameleons, these the lizards, these are irascible creatures. And we don't want to be like that spirit of irascibility. Ahaya is teaching us, as is evident, not to eat nor partake in these things. Um, this eagle, sadly, the children of Edom, our brother, they have to be mindful because the scriptures refer to them as eagles often, and Edom struggles with being in Belgium and deceiving the hearts of men, being designing and calculating. So uh, fellow brothers and sisters in the faith of the children of Esau, be encouraged to make sure you're walking in true guilelessness according to scripture not merely doing it as a facade in an attempt to get what you want or take something that someone else has. So hopefully that helps understanding the spirit of the law. Uh, continue when you're ready. Oh, <laughs> I forgot I'm the reader. <laughs> Chapter 10, verse 5. And thou shalt not eat, saith he, Lamprey, nor polypus, nor cuttlefish, thou shalt not, he meaneth, become like unto such men who are desperately wicked and are already condemned to death, just as these fishes alone are accursed and swim in the depths, not swimming on the surface like the rest, but dwell on the ground beneath the deep sea. Now these people specifically they're completely consumed in iniquity. Like there's nothing good about them. And you know those type of people where they they don't really care about anything. They're gonna do what they're gonna do, and they don't care who hurt or who they have to get over or what they have to do to get it. And those people are well, as the scripture say it. But Alahayo can deliver all. So I be gracious that some of those people actually turn around and open their eyes as we can see and are just completely consumed in whatever spirit is leaving them. Mm -hmm. Interesting. on that Interestingly enough, he just said, Thou shalt not become like unto such men. He didn't say, like, don't have any interactions with them because, as you know, we have to be at peace with all men. And as you were mentioning, we don't know the outcome of everyone's situation. Just because someone may look like they're 
in a dire spot doesn't mean that that's where they're going to end up. So in our compassion for all, we still have mercy upon people, even though they may be sinners. And we just have to be mindful that we don't become like them so that they can have an example of Christ, even as Joseph was an example of Christ to all his brothers. All right, verse 6. Moreover, thou shalt not eat the hair. Why so? Thou shalt not be found a corrupt of boys, nor shalt thou become like such persons. For the hair gaineth one passage in the body every year. For according to the number of years it lives, it has just so many orifices. Right, so to speak this in language terms, uh, the hair, the hair deals with homosexuality, and also every year it finds a new mate. So it'll have a mate for a year, and then the next year it'll have a new mate, and then the next year it'll have a new mate. So as many years as the hair lives, it has that many mates. And that's why we're not supposed to be like the hair. Um, there's more understanding to the business of acting like the hair, is that the hair also represents a two faced person who does some good deeds and some wicked deeds. So you have to be careful of that as well. The hair is a, a very interesting creature, and the patterns of his conduct is one thing that we have to be very, very mindful not to fall into as being believers. And that Practice and righteousness. Um, Brother Constantine, can you read the chapter in the Asher chapter 2, verse 8 to 10, please? Yeah, sure. Testament of Asher chapter 2, verse 8 to 10. Another committed adultery and fornication, and abstaineth from meats. And when he fasted, he doeth evil. And by the power of his wealth, overwhelmeth many. And notwithstanding his excessive wickedness, he doeth the commandments. This too hath a twofold aspect, but the whole is evil. Such men are hairs, clean, like those that divide the hoof, but in very deed are unclean. For Allah Hayim in the tables of the commandments hath thus declared. So if we get a little more the two faced, then good and evil make us unclean people. So you have to be mindful of a double mind or being two faced or operating one way or having devices within you that's the opposite of how you're portraying everything. And we have to be very mindful of, of speaking the truth in our hearts and doing all things in sincerity and not trying to get what, what we want through God. That's, that's a very important thing for a believer because in Psalms 15, it's very specific about who shall enter in the kingdom. And being of a double mind, one of the things that's going to lead you away from the things that lived in the Psalms chapter 15. You got anything on the hair of the Dr. Trump? We can team up to this one, man. <laughs> uh, I would say reference the lesson on Asher and the lesson on Benjamin because they both struggle with the evil inclination and there's edification in those lessons on how one can better operate if one struggles with these things. All right. Uh, Bible, September 7. Again, neither shalt thou eat the hyena. Thou shalt not, saith he, become an adulterer or a fornicator. Neither shalt thou resemble such persons. Why so? Because this animal changeth its nature year by year. And becometh at one time male and on another female. Very straightforward. Through the hyena, one can understand not only is the dosha and fornication wrong, but also the same kind of relation. And men become females and females become men. It's a clean for us to be or resemble. But we have to remember the law in that and not fall into those diverse spirits of lust. Freedom and strength. Um, but the you got anything on that before we continue? 
it's uh the spiritual struggle is tough for the world because as that animal changes his nature year by year the people that struggle with wanting to change their kind like men want to become women and such the documentaries on how after they do the change they regret it and they'll want to change back just as this hyena changes from year to year so understand these spiritual strongholds are real so may the lord deliver and pray pray a lot lord be gracious all right brother zachar it's a tough spirit. It's a tough spirit that we call people because the spirit, a lot of times, it it's it's so tough that it leads people to their own delusion or their own. It gives people their own peculiar vision, and a lot of times people fall into that specific spirit. They associate it with just the way that they are, or they've been like this since they were younger. Or they were born that way. And once you get into a, a mindset like that, it's hard to come out or it's hard to overcome. Because you're not looking at what I'm doing is wrong. You're looking at it, I'm justifying it. And this is just what it is. And you have to accept it because I'm trying to accept it. And that's where you get into that battle that they have within their mind. and it just becomes a it becomes a stronghold. Yeah. So so that specific spirit, it's a lot of prayer. A lot of prayer to overcome it and a lot of self restraint. So Lord be gracious and Moreover, he had hated the weasel also, and with good reason. Thou shalt not saith he, become such as those men of whom we hear as working iniquity with their mouth for uncleanness, neither shalt thou cleave unto the impure women who work iniquity with their mouth, for this animal conceiveth with its mouth. Our tongue can defile the whole body, and we have to be mindful how we use it. Brothers and sisters also know that every sister is in a sister. And it can be known by the pure or impure use of their mouth to work good or for iniquity. And this also goes for the brothers. You have to be very mindful. But the sisters in particular, it's big. Sisters also have to be mindful to be pure women in tongue, exemplifying the fruits of the spirit. This is why the scripture when it speaks about that a woman may win them over by your chat conversation. Of course, that means your conduct, but also your conversation has to be tasked as well. So you actually have to combine your tongue and speak words of righteousness and stay away from being a busybody in other men's matters and being involved in other people's houses because these things are things that usually attack the women more than men. There's a lot more scriptures I can go into. Brother Cox, you want to touch on this? Uh, there are scriptures on women. And, you know. But I think we're going to go into the women's Right. So That's why I was trying to say the more of it. For that. Right. Well, so we're going to continue on the spirit of the law. Can we go to Barnabas chapter 10, verse 9 and 10? Yes. Uh, Barnabas chapter 10, verse 9. Concerning meats, then Moses received three decrees to this effect and uttered them in a spiritual sense. But they accepted them according to the lust of the flesh, as though they referred to eating. Verse 10. And David also receiveth knowledge of the same three decrees, and saith, Blessed is the man who hath not gone in the counsel of the unholy, even as the fishes go in darkness into the depths and hath not stood in the path of sinners, just as they who pretend to fear the Lord sin like swine. So remember those who pretend to fear the Lord and work, but with their mouth, they sing praises with their actions, and the heart is far from Elias. But they will sin in their deeds, 
and only seek the cry of the Lord when they're in want, or <laughs> when some calamity has come upon them. In those we ought not to cast pearls of the word of the gospel unto reap and trample it and rend us underfoot. So we have to be very mindful. We have to be wise to serve the harm that that does. We are operating as people. You have to try a friend. Try a friend just to make sure to see what's actually going on with that person. And not just giving them the benefit of the doubt and going on and not understanding the person that you're dealing with. That's not wisdom. We have to walk in wisdom. We have to, although we are not provocative because we're harmless as does, but yet we're wise as certain. And we have to understand and see the signs and see the things that's going on with people so that we can understand how we are to operate with them. And that's wisdom. Of course, we give everybody love. We love everybody. But you can't operate with everybody the same because they will trample you. They will lean you on the foot. And that's just not wisdom. You got any ammunition, Brother Kapitol? I think you said it well. But as you mentioned, the precept from Sarat, try a friend. Give people time. Make sure you get to know people before you start going into trying to speak about the gospel and such with them because it may not be for them or the words may be out of due season and naturally harped upon doing things in their proper order and in due season with good intent. So knowing this new approach doing things in the spirit it's a good work and orderly to get to know people first understand them before trying to drop pearls on them or give them the benefit of the doubt of just being friends because you don't know who you're dealing with as being a friend that's why scriptures say have one counselor in the house because you go off and just opening up to this person and this person may not be a good person, indeed. He might go off and tell all your business to somebody else. Or go off and slander you to other people. So you definitely have to be mindful as to who you're dealing with. Even when it comes to a day-to-day -day basis, not even trying to spread the gospel or speak about the gospel to somebody. Because people tend to listen to people who are their friends more than they listen to a stranger. So in talking or preaching the gospel to somebody, they will be more adherent to listening to you after you have became a friend and after they have grown to know you than you being a stranger. So with that, you have to know who you're dealing with. But um, I'm going to go and finish. I'm sorry. Jump in there. I was listening. I don't know yeah, where I was going. <laughs> um, <laughs> yep. Uh, you can continue that. Yeah, I think I, I lost it. All together, just take your time. Oh, naturally, with a good intent. So, we will be doing things in orderliness to get to know people, learn them before speaking of things in the word, speaking of spiritual things. So that when we speak, it will be with good intent so as not to speak it without due season and also be mindful if the word isn't for the person, we will show mercy upon them by not telling them about something that they're going to reject anyway. That's it. Okay. You go ahead and continue. All right. Continuing in Barnabas chapter 10, the rest of verse 10 where David said, and hath not sat in the seat of the destroyers as the birds that are seated for prey, ye have now the complete lesson concerning eating. Chapter 10, verse 11. Again, Moses saith, ye shall eat everything that divideth the hook and cheweth the cud. What meaneth he? He that receiveth food knoweth him that giveth him the food. And being refreshed, appeareth to rejoice in him. Well, said he, having regard to the commandment, what then meaneth he? 
cleave to those that fear the Lord. That's right. See, so everything that the Bible says, look at you, really, these animals, they reverence their master. I, I don't know how many people are familiar with sheep and goats uh, and how they operate. They are very, they're very complacent on the one that takes care of them. They run away from other people. <laughs> but when it comes to the one that takes care of them, they're right there. And they know who takes care of them and they don't forget it. And that's why the sheep and lambs or, or and those that buy the grocery sheep good. Uh, they're they're loyal. They're loyal people. And they're always mindful, even in the spiritual sense, they're mindful of our lion. And this is how we're supposed to be. Right? Okay. That's why we cleave to those that fear a height. Just like sheep and lambs, they cleave to one another. They they go in herds. And we're supposed to be walking in herds. We're supposed to be walking together in the body of Christ, walking together in her in unity. Watch it, looking out for one another. If one straggles or straggles behind, we make sure that that one catches back up to the rest of the herd. This is how sheep and goats operate, and this is how we're supposed to operate, in a good, righteous sense of Allah. Um, you got anything on that? Oh, no, I thought that was good. All right, you continue. I'm giving you the floor here, man. <laughs> I thought that was good. Thank you. Um, I All guess right. the only thing, I don't know if you had mentioned it, that we're supposed to cleave on to those people that act like sheep and clean cattle, as Zachor spoke of, who fear Allah and don't continue in sin like swine. They appreciate when Allah brings them out of situations and they continue in growing and focusing on going forward to get close unto him rather than getting comfy once they get what they want. It goes on to say, with those who meditate in their heart on the distinction of the word which they have received. Those who are idle hearers, just going through the motions and enjoying the lesson or reading, but don't take it to heart and meditate on it to make changes in their lives. So if we do this, we will be just like the Israelites who love to come hear the word and speak with all the love and speech, but won't actually do what is commanded. But we'll be like unto a Pharisee. We will tell other people to do what's right, but we won't do what's right ourselves. Um, Brother Thomas, can you read Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 31, please? Yes, verse 31. And they come unto thee as the people cometh, and they sit before thee as my people, and they hear thy words, but they will not do them. For with their mouth they show much love, but their heart goeth after their covetousness. But literally, just ask the Pharisees. My mouth and our heart aren't single, like clean animals. And this is what we're aiming to be. We want our mouth and our heart to not be contrary, but to be parallel. We want them to, to go the same direction. We want, we want them to come together, right? So our mouth and our heart are single like the clean animals. When we speak well, our heart is entertaining covenant inclinations. So we're being of a double mind or a double heart. Or two faces in that. We speak one thing and then we do another. Hypocrites. But I have to, can you continue in Ezekiel 32, verse 32? Yes, verse 32. And lo, thou art unto them as a very lovely song of one that hath a pleasant voice and can play well on an instrument. For they hear thy words, but they do them not. They are not the be, but please to be strong. Let's continue in the spirit of the law. Then we go to Barnabas chapter 10, verse 11. Continuing in Barnabas chapter 10, verse 11. 
Again, Moses saith, Ye shall eat everything that divideth the hook and cheweth the cud. What meaneth he? He that receiveth food knoweth him that giveth him the food, and being refreshed, appeareth to rejoice in him. Well, said he, have a regard to the commandment. What then meaneth he? Cleave to those that fear the Lord, with those who meditate in their heart on the distinction of the word which they have received, with those who tell of the ordinance of the Lord and keep them. For noting that those teachers who tell of the Lord ordinances, not their own, and actually keep the ordinances, as well not be a hypocrite, we can be led astray with the blind. So this is what we want to be, and they want to keep what we want to cleave unto. They continue to the doctrine. With those who know that meditation is a work of gladness, and who chew the cut of the word of the Lord. Mm. So now we understand what chewing the cud actually means. To actually chewing the cud of the word of the lion, to actually eating it and digesting it. It's actually going into them. And it's actually taking root. We want to be a hearer of the word and a doer of the word. But in order for us to be a doer of the word, we have to digest it. We have to meditate upon it. And we actually have to, <laughs> we have to render it within ourselves so that we can operate in that spirit or operate in the fashion of what we took in. So we have to cleave to who are humble of heart and optimistic for the change that comes from meditation on the word to assess their ways, counting it as a work of gladness for the blessing to be shown their faults, not being upset or offended when correct but glad in the Holy Spirit, knowing that we are being cleansed and perfected as gold is tried in the fire and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. So the gospel take it to the priest. Sure. But why that which divided the hoof? Because the righteous man both walketh in this world and at the same time looketh for the holy world to come. You see how wise a lawgiver Moses was. Amen. These are the people who are in the world but not of the world, as they wait for the world to come. Not lose their hope or lose their sight of that which is coming, but having their faith increased and girded that they may endure until the end. Those who walk like these clean animals decide righteously and take pleasure in the genuine good man not the same and do it. And it's easy when you're walking correctly and your heart is set aright, it's easy to see those that are not. Because you're actually doing it yourself and you're not blinded. When you're not blinded, you can see clearly. That's why Yache said, you can't correct somebody when you have a moat in your eye. And you're trying to get the beam out of someone else's. Because you can't see it right either. Because your ways are not right. And you're going to see everything from your own peculiar vision or your own perspective of what you want it to be. Instead of seeing the perspective of our hand and actually implementing those things in your life and walking uprightly and having your mindset changed and transformed so that now when you look out with your eyes you're actually seeing a clean perfect perspective seeing and viewing everything in the light of our eyes and this is where we want to be we want to be at that point where it's not about us anymore it's not about our own desires that's clouding our judgment. But we're seeing things Allah wants us to be in. From his perspective. Brother Cosmo, so you remember the scripture where um in, I think it's in Isaiah where he speaks about how man's ways are unright and his ways are right. I remember Ezekiel he talks about how 
they say the way of the Lord is not equal. That's it. It's ridiculous. Okay. Is Ezekiel 18. When a righteous man turneth away from his righteousness and committeth iniquity and dieth in them, for his iniquity that he hath done shall he die. Again, when the wicked man turneth away from his wickedness that he hath committed and doeth that which is lawful and right, he shall save his soul alive. Because he considereth and turneth away from all his transgressions that he hath committed, he shall surely live and shall not die. Yet saith the house of Israel, the way of the Lord is not equal. O house of Israel, are not my ways equal? Are not your ways unequal? There was a last verse in verse 30 that was important to hopefully finish it all up. Ezekiel 18 and 30 said, Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel. Everyone according to his ways, saith the Lord Ahaya. Repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions, so iniquity shall not be your ruin. So we really, we really have to turn, we really have to flip our own person before we can cleanse another. And we need that because how can darkness overcome darkness? If I'm walking in the dark and I can't see, then you're walking in the dark and you can't see. How can we overcome darkness? I have to be full of light to then shine light on your darkness so that you can see. And then your light, after all the darkness is gone from you, you can see if all your light is shining on another person to <laughs> remove their darkness. So we have to overcome the darkness in ourselves. And that's the only way that we will be able to make it. And to help our brother. That's why the scripture said we beat that brother and suffer not sin upon him. But in order to get to that point, we have to be so light ourselves. Um, uh, brother, can you touch on the testament of Asher? We're going to read verses 4 to 6. Amen. You just peep that what you said just brought the law and the testimony together. <laughs> That's what I asked each other for. <laughs> for good men, even they that are of a single face, though they be thought by them that are double faced to sin, are just before Allah. For many, in killing the wicked do two works of good and evil but the whole is good because he hath uprooted and destroyed that which is evil one man hateth the merciful man an unjust man and the man who committeth adultery and fasteth this too hath a twofold aspect but the whole work is good because he followeth the lord's example in that he accepteth not the seeming good as the genuine good Another desired not to see a good day with them that riot, lest he defile his body and pollute his soul. This too is double-faced, but the whole is good. For such men are like stags and hinds, because in the manner of wild animals they seem to be unclean, but they are altogether clean, because they walk in zeal for the Lord, and abstaineth from what Allah also hateth and forbiddeth by his commandments warding off evil from the good you see my children how that there are two in all things one against the other and the one is hidden by the other in wealth is hidden covetousness in conviviality drunkenness in laughter grief in wedlock profligacy death succeeded to life dishonor to glory night to day and darkness to light and all things are under the day, and just things under life, unjust things under death. Wherefore also eternal life awaiteth death. Nor may it be said that truth is a lie, nor right wrong, 
for all truth is under the light, even as all things are under Allah. All these things, therefore, I proved in my life, and I wandered not from the truth of the Lord, and I searched out the commandments of the Most High, walking according to all my strength with singleness of face unto that which is good. Take heed, therefore, ye also, my children, to the commandment of the Lord, following truth with singleness of face. For they that are double-faced are guilty of a twofold sin, for they both do the evil thing, and they have pleasure in them that do it, following the example of the spirits of deceit, and striving against mankind. Do ye therefore, my children, keep the law of the Lord, and give not heed unto the evil as unto good, but look unto the thing that is really good, and keep it in all commandments of the Lord, having your conversation therein, and rest in therein. I will build ammunition. <coughs> One key thing that I want to focus on in this passage. At the end, he says, Do ye therefore, my children, keep the law of the Lord, and give not heed unto evil as unto good. But look unto the thing that is really good, and keep it in all commandments of the Lord, having your conversation with it. And rest in there. He's literally telling you that you have to be this person. There's no faking. You can't do some good and some evil because if you're doing some good and some evil, that means that it's not genuine. It's not sincere. That means that you're divided. That you're you may be a bad person that does some good because in the shepherd of Hermes, the angel, when, when, I want to go to it. <laughs> I do not want to just paraphrase this for the shepherd of Hermes. <laughs> I, I, God, I'll, I'll read it for you. Thank you. Um, I'm going I'm to touch on something. No, I want to read it. Okay. Um, we have to be that person in heart. We have to truly change who we are to become a person of light, a person who walks by the commandments, who has the conversation there and who rests in it. You have to be that person. You have to be that person of love. You have to be that person who is sincere, who wants to help people, who truly wants to walk in the commandments and walk uprightly? You have to be that person. If not, you're going to be double minded. You're going to be two faced. You're going to be lukewarm. And this is exactly what Alahayan was trying to explain to us is that we literally have to want it. Because if your desire is somewhere else, your heart's not going to be in it. And if your heart's not in it, you're not going to do it wholeheartedly. You're going to be reborn. You're going to do a little bit as you see fit. Like, oh, I did that, but you know, I'm, now I'm about to go do something for me. And if you have that mindset that, oh, now I'm about to go do something for me, that means that your heart wasn't in it in the first place. If you if you're doing something nice for somebody, and then you say, "Oh well, I've done enough. I'm going to I'm going to do something else, or whatever the case is," then your heart wasn't fully in it in the first place. So we have to be very mindful of that in our growth. And if you're sitting here watching the video. You're trying to get there because you're actually taking the time, actually trying to learn so that you can get there and understand. So this is where we have to be. Brother Cosmo, we are ready for that because this is going to bring it all together so that everybody can understand what's, because we're, we're touching on the spiritual aspect of the law. So we have to understand the spiritual battle 
that's going on and the spiritual significance of the things that's keeping us away from getting what we want to be. Uh, Brother Cox is going every year. Shepherd of Hermas 96, chapter 2, verse 8. And if again a man or a woman be exceedingly wicked, and the works of the angel of righteousness come into that man's heart, he must of necessity do some good. But from the angel of wickedness stand aloof, for his teaching is evil in every matter. For though one be a man of faith, and the desire of this angel enter into his heart, that man or that woman must commit some sin. That was definitely enough. I was right on it. Okay. Um, now, we don't want to be that wicked man where the angel of righteousness comes into our vessel and we have to do some good, but then we go back to our wickedness. That sounds like a lot of people, doesn't it? Where they're always into something or they're doing something wrong or whatever the case is. And they're not operating very uprightly. They're not keeping the commandments, whatever the case is. They're not striving for it. But they do something nice every now and then. Or they adhere to a couple of commandments. And there's a couple of commandments that they keep. Let's say it's a, it's a brother or sister who says they're walking in the faith. But you see a whole bunch of commandments that they don't keep. But there's certain ones that they keep faithfully. What is the life of that man? That man literally, he does wickedness and the angel of righteousness comes. He has to do some good. We don't want to be that person. Now, on the contrary, the righteous man is trying to walk, or the righteous sister is trying to walk uprightly. And then the angel of iniquity comes and they commit a sin. You stand in ignorance. Repent and stand aloof from it. Know the devices of the enemy, learn from it. But the righteous man falls several times, but he gets back up. You have to get back up. And stand aloof from the devices of the enemy. You're like, okay, you got me there, but I'm not going to fall for that. And that's righteous. Amen. That's who we want to be. Even going through our growth, going through our growth to get to the point of perfection that we all are seeking to be, we have to be able to say, okay, and learn from our mistakes and grow from it. Because every time you learn from your mistakes, you become stronger. You become stronger in the faith. Because you're like, okay, I've been through that before. I'm not going to follow that no more. That's one less thing that you're going to fall to until you get to the point where you're like, okay, I'll follow this, 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 and this. I learned from this, 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 and this. I'm not going to follow anymore. You're, you're falling less and less and less as you progress. And that's what's supposed to be happening. That's progression. That's experience making <laughs> making you perfect and growing your patience. If we walk in the spirit being a single face, though the world of two faces may view us as sinners in the sight of our lion, who we seek to flee. We shall be cold. Amen. So no matter how people see you, though you may fall, though you may fall to the vice of the enemy sometimes, and the angel of iniquity causes you to sin sometimes. And though the people of the world view you as a sinner because you fall sometimes, Allah and Zeke is clean. Because he knows our heart, he knows we're sincerely trying. And that we're overcoming those obstacles that have caused us to fall and we're standing away from it. So, Brother Council, it's the end of it, man. You got anything you want to say? Well, as you said, we have to want it. That desire has to be there. Ask also, not only explain what you are going into, 
he also explained the mindset that you're speaking of in Asher chapter 1 verse 6. Therefore, if the soul take pleasure in the good inclination, all its actions are in righteousness. And if it sin, it straightway repenteth. For having its thoughts set upon righteousness and casting away wickedness, it straightway overcometh the evil and uprooteth the sin. So. Amen. Amen. And now you have a scriptural back then for my rent. <laughs> Oh, All right. Do we have any questions? <clears throat> um, I don't see any. Chabad the Chalam, Brother Hanu, Keon Miller, Chabad the Chalam, Mana, Chabad the Chalam, Sister Lita, Chabad the Chalam, Chabad the Chalam. I don't see any questions, but this is good. Food for thought. Getting our minds right here. Uh, I guess we'll go ahead and pray out. So get on get on out of here. Well, I'm gonna let you pray out um to be so kind. Um I I bless all you guys. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your chapter today. Um, may I how they keep you, may they grow you, may they strengthen you, uh, may they focus you to, to stay in the fight and stay in tune and stay vigilant, knowing the device for the enemy and knowing that he's always seeking to, to get us to stumble or fall, no matter how big or how small, that we overcome and may we be strengthened. I'm ready for you, brother. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptations, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Thank you, Ahayala, for this day, and thank you for this edification, for growth in our spirits. And we pray all men come to the knowledge of the truth, and that we walk by your grace and patience and with a good heart to attain unto the salvation in our Lord Christ Yahshua. In the name of our Lord Yahshua, we pray. Amen. Shalom, everyone. Have a good day. Shalom. Let's see you. Shalom. 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 Shalom.